with video 17, The Origin of Life. And this is going to be a pretty quick one, so you'll enjoy it. Uh, the Origin of Life, you know, there's many theories of the Origin of Life, and I just picked out three here. The first one is spontaneous generation, which basically says living things come from non living things. Now, we think that's totally crazy, you know, a living thing can't come from something that's not living. But a long time ago, when it rained, you know, they saw a lot more frogs than normal, so they thought that maybe frogs came from raindrops. Um, whenever they left meat out on the counter, you know, eventually maggots would start to form in it. Um, if you had a mud puddle, they walked by the mud puddle a few days, and they would see maybe tadpoles or mosquitoes starting to grow in it, mosquito larvae. Uh, so that's spontaneous generation. And in 1668, Francisco Reddy said, this is totally crazy. Um, he did a little experiment where he took jars, and he put meat in one jar, and meat in another jar, and he put cheesecloth over one of the jars to keep flies from getting to the meat. And the one without the cheesecloth, of course, maggots developed after a few days, and the one that had cheesecloth, it didn't. So he disproved it, but people still believed it until uh, Louis Pasteur came along in the mid-1800s. And he did an experiment which he did. He used what's called a gooseneck flask. Now, a gooseneck flask looks like it's, it's, a, it's a flask that has a neck, I know you love my drawing, it has this neck here, so when things fall down, they can only reach this part, and they can't reach the, the liquid that's in actually the flask, and he put like a, a broth in this flask that was nutrient risk, and he left it for 365 days, and nothing grew in the broth. After 365 days, he came back, and he broke the neck of this flask off right here, and he allowed things to get to it, and the very next day, things were growing in that broth, so he just proved spontaneous generation was possible because if it had been possible, there'd been something growing in all along, and there wasn't. And Louis Pasteur came up with an idea that I think everybody believes in is biogenesis. Bio means living. Genesis means the creation of life or the creation. Um, Louis Pasteur said that living organisms can only come from other living organisms. You know, humans come from humans. Dogs come from dogs. Cats from cats. So, you know, I, I, we believe that. Uh, probably the widely, most widely accepted theory was done by a man named Alexander Perrin, and it's called the primordial soup theory. And basically he said life came from the oceans, which we know our oldest fossil records show that life originated in the oceans, and, you know, with archaeobacteria and different things like that. Um, but the thing that sets his theory across, across, apart from everything else is that two gentlemen, Stanley Miller and Harold Uray, in 1953, and, and there's experiments in the back of chapter 17, uh, a picture of it, but they tested that it's possible. And what what they basically said was this: that all these elements were in the atmosphere, and all these elements in the atmosphere uh, rained down as the Earth was cooling. It rained down into the oceans, and because it was violent electric storms, electric current was going through the water and caused these um, these elements that were in the atmosphere to create amino acids. And just by chance, these amino acids made organic molecules, etc. So there's a lot of chance events there, which sounds far-fetched, but Stanley Mill and Helge Ray in 1953 in a laboratory actually put the same elements in a, in a flask, uh, added electricity to it, and created all 20 amino acids. So uh, they didn't make life, but they said that it was possible, so it's still a theory. Um, another guy I just want you to know is a man named C.D. Fox. He invented what's called a protocell, and the neat thing about the protocell is that it did most of the things that a living cell can do, uh, such as grow and develop, um, you know, but it, it couldn't carry on all the activities, so it's not considered living. But just know Sydney Fox proto cell. All right, now the last thing is the first cell. I want you to know it. The first cells were heterotrophic. Know what that means. Heterotrophic means they eat other organisms. All right. Prokaryotic, which means they had no nucleus and they were probably one cell. And anaerobic, which means they needed no oxygen, which is good because there wasn't much oxygen on the earth at this time. So the first living organisms or the oldest record we have of organisms were heterotrophic. They ate other, each other, prokaryotic, they were single-celled, and they were anaerobic. They live in a non-oxygen non environment. Then along came photosynthetic cells, which is going to put oxygen into the atmosphere so you can start to have aerobic organisms. And then finally you had eukaryotic cells, which is important because we're eukaryotic. So you had the, this step in progression. All right, guys, uh, that's video 17. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and have a good day.